afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us today. This is Amanda Ragnaris, EVP of Product and Marketing, and we are going to get started. Just a few housekeeping items before uh, we start. Um, you'll notice that there is a chat option for you in your Zoom um, platform. We will take questions throughout the presentation, uh, depending on whether or not, um, you know, if they're pertinent to the exact timing, we might save them to answer towards the end, but you're welcome to submit them throughout this, uh, throughout this webinar. Um, so we're, kind of, we're really excited about this. We've done this uh, looking forward or looking back and looking forward webinar over the past few years. It's been a really great time for U.S. Signal to highlight um, the things that we've done and where we're going. Um, it's always interesting when we uh, start to um, prepare for this that, you know, looking back, you're like, wow, I can't believe we actually accomplished everything that we did. And then it just creates the excitement for what we're doing um, in 2020 and years beyond. Very quickly, I just would like to highlight uh, U.S. Signal is a, is a company, if anyone in, is joining us today, and um, they don't know who we are. We are a data center services provider that is privately held. Uh, we're uh, headquartered in the state of Michigan, and we do provide a full suite of network-powered cloud solutions and data protection services. We are a premier uh, VMware service provider. Now, they're one of our top partners in everything that we do from a hosting and uh, platform perspective is based on our VMware relationship. In addition to that, we are a top 10 Zerto cloud partner in the United States as well as a gold beam cloud provider in the U.S. as well. And um, gratefully, we are able to own and operate eight Midwest data centers that power all that we do from an organizational perspective. Back in 2019, um, U.S. Signal was able to, um, to perform a, a survey that was sent out to set to 101 organizations that, or 101 IT, IT leaders with up to 750 employees. And here's what we found. 75% said that ransomware and DDoS attacks are the most prevalent threats to their organizations. 83% had experienced malicious attacks in the past two years. 52 of those surveyed said that they've experienced five to 10 hours of downtime and 30% experienced 11 to 20 hours of downtime because of those cyber or um, of the ransomware threats that they had. The most dire consequence to companies during these attacks were revenue loss, decreased productivity, and a damaged reputation. The reason why that's so important is obviously we know that we base um, what U.S. Signal does from a product and services perspective to help answer the needs that customers have for protecting their assets, whether it be their data center um, and or their data applications and websites, so that it's helpful for us to know that we're um, definitely leading the charge in terms of solutions that will help customers and their IT organizations protect from ransomware and attacks like that. Obviously, we watch the news and we know that globally, um, ransomware and cyber attacks are also a leading threat to organizations. We thought it was interesting that AIG reported in 2019 that in 2018, the second leading cause of claims was because of ransomware. We also know that there are several cities um, and governmental organizations that have been affected by ransomware. Um, last year in 2019, uh, two Florida cities paid a combined of 1.06 million to hackers over ransomware attacks. In New Bedford, Massachusetts, there were hackers that demanded $5.3 million in ransomware attacks um, in the summer, and the city rejected their offer of $400,000 to restore their systems. It's interesting because when you look at those two small examples, you would think that hackers and um, cyber threats are more pertinent to, you know, governmental agencies, top 100 or top 50 um, companies in the United States and globally, obviously, and that's not true. We've even found that SMBs pose a larger risk, even though the ransomware or the ransom might not be as much, but they tend to have smaller IT staff that, is, that are not keeping their systems up to date and patched that leaves them um, to be more of a threat, actually, for, um, for hackers. What that tells us, actually, um, is that what we've done in 2019 definitely meets the needs from an organizational perspective. And what we'd like to do today um, is I'd like to introduce our Executive Director of Product, Matt Vanderslag, so that he can discuss <clears throat> the our data protection strategies and how we've evolved those strategies in 2019. Matt, can you give us some insight into some of the enhancements that we've recently made 
to our data protection offering. Yeah, sure can. Uh, 2019 was pretty awesome. We <laughs> spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, on our d disaster recovery mm -hmm. uh, suite of services. Uh, you can see there at the top, uh, Zerto, that was kind of our flagship offering that's been around since 2016. What we, what we did find over time um, when trying to have customers uh, consume disaster recovery solutions uh, being replication versus uh, backups. The criticality of workloads uh, is obviously uh, there are ones that are less uh, than uh, the top business uh, applications. And also there's heavy budget considerations. So what we've done is introduced two new tiers of service uh, that are kind of a step down from Zerto being uh, continuous data uh, protection. So now we have two offerings uh, in the VMware and Veeam side of things. Uh, and it's cool because there's actually just some niche uh, use cases in there as well. So on the VMware side of things, uh, it leverages vCloud availability. Uh, it's a simple plug-in on vSphere on a customer ground uh, data center, and then they can easily replicate into your vCloud director. Uh, it's cool because you no longer have to integrate a third-party platform in order to uh, create the solution. And then with Veeam, you know, we just recognized early that Veeam has a very loyal and large uh, community for their technologies. And uh, this leverages uh, Cloud Connect replication. Uh, same use case, ground cloud, and they can replicate into our uh, multi-tenant cloud very seamlessly. And then, um, but not to forget about Zerto, We've also evolved uh, some more with that in 2019 as well. So uh, they made some updates to their technology that we've, that we've absorbed. Uh, we can now do multi-cloud replication, uh, meaning a customer's ground site can replicate to two different data centers of ours. And uh, we also introduced a self-managed option. Uh, traditionally, Zerto has only been a managed solution uh, from US Signal, and customers can now manage their own. Awesome. Matt, are there any customer use cases that you're aware of where they would leverage all three offerings to protect from any type of threat? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, whether it be ransomware or uh, user error, those are typically the top two uh, causes of disaster. And we have strategically created these not for a customer to pick just any one of them as their solution. Uh, they can seamlessly be used uh, kind of a la carte. Uh, so place some workloads that, may, that work best for continuous data replication, and then maybe put some others um, on the Veeam solution, uh, whatever makes most sense. Uh, it's all about meeting the budget and getting the best technology in place. Awesome, that's cool. Um, it's, it's really cool to see what we've done from an overall perspective and as it relates to disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. Protecting VMs and workloads, I know that those, obviously that's incredibly important, um, but if customers look to create a deeper defense and strategy, or defense and depth security posture. Um, what have we done to help customers protect things like websites and applications? Sure. Yeah, that was kind of the biggest, the second biggest focus of ours for the year was going up the stack and introducing uh, security more on the application layer. Uh, so what we've done is partnered with Cloudflare. Uh, that was kind of our platform of choice because of the perimeter-based security uh, that it introduces. Cloudflare has a presence of about 200 plus uh, data centers around the world. Mm -hmm. And the whole premise there is that um, as attackers are coming from outside, uh, traffic is being filtered uh, as close to the source as possible. So saving non-network congestion while also accomplishing goals of protecting your application. Uh, it's great for things like volumetric attacks, uh, malicious bots, credential stuffing, brute force attacks, so uh, we've had a lot of success so far with this. Um, what's also very valuable is that it's entirely managed by US Signal. So we've been growing our security operation team uh, for a couple of years now. And this was just another um, nice evolution for that team. We can come in and assess the customer environments and their requirements up front uh, to get them configured in the best way possible. And then tuning thereafter as any attacks may um, arise or whatever, when we have to react, uh, uh, that's the team that responds. And uh, we have structured it in a dual tier uh, fashion. So once again, trying to go to market with solutions that best meet the requirements, uh, both from a technology perspective 
and budget. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what I think is interesting, and like we've mentioned before, U.S. Signal does own and operate our own network, as well as the eight data centers that, um, that we have on our network. So everything that we do is organically grown and built and supported by our organization, which is great. Um, one of the things that uh, allows us to get to market so quickly um, with new products and solutions is the fact that we do own all of that gear and we're not going through third parties or leasing anything um, to put solutions together. Next, we have Dave Wiz, our EVP of operations. And what we would like to do um, is have Dave explain a few things. Uh, one of the most exciting is our newest data center location. Uh, we will then move into some of our expansion opportunities and then talk about our cloud presence um, expansion. So Dave, welcome, thank you. Thank you, Amanda, appreciate the time. <clears throat> to all you folks uh, on the webinar as well. Um, yeah, 2019 was exciting and uh, quite uh, ferocious year as far as getting our new data center uh, located in Metro Detroit up and off the ground. Almost completely constructed in 2019. The initial deployment consists of a 25,000 square foot data center facility expandable to at least 100,000 square foot of uh, pure data center custom concierge design space. Um, much like uh, other facilities we have, it's um, driven by two different substations for power. It was built with diversity and duplicity in mind from the backbone of our own fiber network interconnected into it to the HVAC deployment of those systems, fire protection, security concerns, um, and general uh, physical and uh, software security posture. Uh, it ties really well into all our product and products and portfolios of services that we have um, pre-existing in our other facilities um, that helps us come more robust and can continue to drive that physical data center co-location hosting product um, out towards the edge, out towards, um, you know, further into that backbone closer to our customer, um, providing a great landing spot uh, for those who want to get out of the physical real estate hosting business and real estate maintenance business. <clears throat> um, looking forward into future expansions that we kind of kicked off in 2019, but then also are investigating and uh, potentially come to fruition in 2020 um, is, you know, kind of a compilation and continuance of that, that strategy. We have this very robust network and uh, products, services, uh, fiber backbone, uh, cloud technologies. Um, we want to continue to divest, uh, densify and uh, move that into new geographic regions where it makes business sense for us. A um, couple of those potential opportunities is Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, their business technology and research park uh, located near the campus of WMU and Bronson Hospital. We have a uh, investigation underway in the Fort Wayne metro area uh, to the northwest side of that city in a uh, currently proposed um, potential technology center um, and park that's being developed there. And, and we have another lead that I've uh, been working on and actually meeting with uh, potential anchor clients kind of in the, in the middle of Wisconsin, um, in the Chicago to Madison to Milwaukee corridor, to kind of paint a triangle or head where that's at, um, possibly potentially locating a, uh, a new data center facility built on the same grade as you've come to expect from U.S. Signal in that area. So we'll definitely uh, continue to beat down the doors, uh, perform site selection, and make sure there's business reasoning and uh, potential customer base to go in that direction. Uh, looking ahead furthermore to expand beyond the physical infrastructure, um, you know, the physical infrastructure and what we're doing there provides a great landing spot, as I said, for customers who have determined their main goal and their main objective is to get out of the physical real estate game, um, to not have to worry about the facilities and power of the uptime from a physical location perspective that they want to co-locate with their provider. Um, that's definitely one of our one of our main goals. But looking forward, it's it's also you know our goal to provide a landing uh, a landing location for people who want to completely get out of not only real estate but out of the hardware game. So they're tired of uh, paying the you know the three year refreshes. They're tired of the maintenance contracts uh, with the hardware providers out there, and they want to virtualize. Uh, they want to get the benefit of having 
their IT organizations uh, operate in centers that are local, low latency, near their businesses. Uh, they don't want to go and uh, plant, you know, pl plant their equipment into, you know, transnational connections or facilities. Um, and so that's why we're uh, looking at really um, expanding on our cloud pod or our cloud platform um, presence in existing data center facilities that U.S. Signal owns um, throughout our footprint or potentially, as with Haggerty, um, new ones that we are building and constructing. Um, yeah, so like <clears throat> as Dave was just alluding to, this is uh, introducing our our cloud pod expansion uh, for 2020. <clears throat> Pretty exciting stuff. So if you look at the uh, bottom three facilities that are uh, in mostly white, uh, you'll find the Detroit Metro uh, data center that Dave was highlighting earlier uh, that uh, we'll get access to here in, in Q1. And then down in Indianapolis, and then over in Oak Brook, Illinois, near Chicago. Those are existing facilities of ours that we're going to be expanding into. So um, exciting stuff this year. Uh, we're going to retain our DR capabilities uh, in the existing data centers in Michigan, uh, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and also Southfield, Michigan. So um, yeah, awesome stuff. And then not to be confused with the uh, icon that we have up in the top left uh, that I get questions about sometimes. Uh, that is depicting uh, our ground to cloud DR capabilities. So uh, that will still always be the same. Uh, customer data centers, we we can uh, provide DR services for. And, and as those, uh, as the Oak Brook facility and Indianapolis facility uh, nearest completion, we'll dial in on those uh, those current dates. But it is second quarter for Oak Brook and third quarter expectation for Indianapolis at this point. Cool. Good work. Um, obviously, we started our uh, webinar out with talking and kind of laying the landscape um, in terms of ransomware attacks and cybersecurity and U.S. Signal, as we can see, or as you guys can see from listening to Matt and Dave, continues to be focused on providing that redundant, reliable, um, you know, uh, data center service platform for our customers. Matt, um, with the addition of the new data centers and the cloud pods, um, how does that help customers with their overall data center strategy? Sure. Yeah, I mean, simply put, it's just, it's more options. <clears throat> Dave was talking about it too, where uh, there's a big push for edge computing and bringing uh, that, whether it's hosted computing by a service provider like ourselves mm -hmm. or co-location space, if they're trying to get out of the real estate game, it's about bringing that presence closer to uh, the customer premise, premises. Um, and what we typically find with DR solutions is that there's always this application that can't be modernized, right? So they're bringing in uh, some application on a hardware, piece of hardware that can't be virtualized. Those are right in our wheelhouse because we can um, introduce great latency adjacency by having customers consume co-location space, but also cloud hosting from us within the same data center. Um, take your pick, pick Indianapolis, uh, which will come later this year as an option. Um, they can have that solution there, highly perform it, close to their premises, and then we can do DR options over to a uh, opposing data center. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, now moving forward into um, some of the expansion in terms of our service offerings, mm -hmm. Matt, can you explain some of the things that are on the horizon for at least the first two or three quarters of 2020? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> These are the... These are the three buckets that I can categorize things into. We're going to be focusing on network data protection and security. And even in the network side of things, uh, that's still relevant to cloud. That's what our focus is. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to an end user and, and things shifting from on-premise hosting of applications and services to the cloud, uh, whether it be you're driving for content or you're driving for um, a SaaS offering of some kind, what we have is we have content providers, SaaS providers in our cloud, in our data centers, but then they're obviously externally hosted as well. So we are building on our peering relationships, our network exchanges, and then our public cloud connections as well. Um, once again, decreasing hops between end user and application, uh, more security around private connectivity. It's not traversing the internet through transit providers. Um, and just overall better performance. So um, all of these three things that I've listed there as targets are things that exist today with U.S. Signal Services. 
but we're just continuing to expand on that. Um, under the data protection side, um, we did a lot with Dean this year. Um, so we kind of to recap a little bit of that, we didn't do it in the earlier part of the, the segment, but uh, we have Cloud Connect backup and replication support. Uh, we have inside of protection. We have Cloud Archive. We call it our Cloud Availability for Beam. Um, we're going to take it a little bit step further and introduce managed services for those. And we're also going to dive into on-premises appliances. So whether, in a lot of cases, customers are being introduced to a net new solution, and they don't always have the compute and storage on hand uh, to support the solution locally. So uh, to streamline that process, uh, U.S. Signal will be uh, have, have the ability to apply, um, supply those appliances. And then on the security side, um, we used to have a multi-tier approach to our managed uh, firewalls. Uh, they included a couple different vendors, a couple different platforms. Um, we've condensed that. We've made it more simple and we have shifted to exclusively Palo Alto virtual appliances. Um, it's an overall benefit. Uh, it, it's not just makes it more simple, simple and easy to consume. It's also an enhancement because it provides more visibility to our customers in what they can see as far as the service is concerned. And then lastly, vulnerability management. Um, I spoke of our Security Operations Center earlier, and this is going to be the next phase for them. Uh, customers have been asking for some help for, um, for a while now uh, when it comes to compliance and governance and having a vulnerability management program. So we are going to be diving into that as an offering as well. That's awesome. Um, a quick question here that we do have related to the Palo Alto offering. Um, will we be upgrading our current checkpoint customers to Palo Alto? We will be. Yep. Yep, so um, customers can expect to hear from us uh, as the year goes on. We're putting the plans together. Uh, but all existing services as they stand today will um, be shifting over to the Palo Alto platforms. Great. Yep. We do have another question. Dave, this would be more geared towards you. Sure. Um, can we expand on the possibility of the Fort Wayne Technology Center? Um, what's the purpose of this location if we, if we know that? And is it something that... <clears throat> Uh, looks like a good possibility for you, a signal. Sure. It's, you know, we, we believe it to be a potential uh, site for investigation for a few reasons, I believe. Uh, one is <clears throat> the current existing infrastructure uh, in northern Indi Indiana that U.S. Signal has to build off with their fiber backbone. And um, the, the, the mix of um, the availability of services in the Fort Wayne area um, to truly service and to bring data center, not only the physical, but mind you, eventually beyond that, you know, that virtual hosting type services, IS services and whatnot, um, into that area. It, it's, you know, it's a good market um, where folks don't have a provider um, that can provide the robustness of services U.S. Signal, so U.S. Signal can. So when you take a look at what the city is doing um, to drive technology locally, the demand for technology locally, and then U.S. Signal's unique ability and portfolio of services with a pre-existing fiber backbone um, to really control that door to data center type, uh, type product set. Um, there's a lot of reason to target that, uh, that location. We already have locations uh, throughout Michigan. We have a location in Indianapolis, as you, uh, most of you know, um, and it somewhat continues to push that envelope of getting compute environments um, in region towards the edge. Um, everyone now on their handheld devices, um, you know, within their, within their shops, working from home, wherever it might be, has a high demand for data. Um, latency can be a problem with that. Um, so it fits right into the general strategy of bringing the Internet of Things to your doorstep, bringing content delivery to your doorstep. Um, and, you know, allowing you to have a near similar experience as you would with on-prem server architecture, um, but being just the net hop on a trusted resilient backbone um, that has been a carrier or a provider, you know, in that region for multiple decades. Awesome. Thank you. 
We have another question related to hyperscale cloud providers. Mm -hmm. What are some um, use cases that customers have um, have done basically to leverage our hyper, our connections to hyperscale cloud providers? Yeah, uh, the biggest thing is DevOps. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll have customers come in. Uh, they may have their business uh, applications that they need to have close to them, uh, close proximity, but they could have um, their DevOps team building software where they need the quick agility to turn up, spin down, spin up uh, servers, uh, varying sizes and times and, and things like that. So uh, it works out great. Uh, we will drill in a private connection uh, over to Take Your Pick, uh, Big Three, and um, and then they consume services that way. Great. Yeah. Any other questions that we have out there? Um, and yep, question here. We have some workloads in a public cloud. Is it possible to host the rest with you? And then do you facilitate access, which I think you kind of mentioned, to those hyperscale public cloud providers? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Yeah, that's, um, you can play off that same use case that I was just mentioning. Um, and they don't have to be DevOps. It can be whatever you want. So the fact of the matter is, and we actually help customers identify this. So if you do need help, going through your different workloads and trying to figure out what plays best where. Uh, we do that out the gate with customers. Um, you can certainly post whatever you want in a hyperscale cloud, have the rest with us on either dedicated or multi-tenant offerings. I didn't, we didn't specifically say that earlier, but we do have those two uh, flavors of hosting. Um, and then we have both Express Route and Direct Connect, which are the Azure AWS uh, terms for their products. Uh, connectivity through multiple exchanges. Uh, so um, they can go out specifically through Chicago down to Ashburn, Virginia um, to enable that connection. Great. Great. Any other last words or comments that you guys would like to make? I don't believe so. Oh, uh, do have any more questions? I do not think so. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we definitely appreciate your time and uh, look forward to more announcements throughout the rest of the year about how U.S. Signal is expanding um, our service offerings in the Midwest. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you.